Hey, hey. You guys ready? I have the hiccups. So this might be really annoying. <laughs> I am drinking today Blue Moon Haze. Hazy, juicy, pale ale. And it's what's giving me the hiccups. I have it on ice. Shower. <laughs> Shower beers. And I just was trying to drink the little bit that didn't fit in my cup. And now I have the hiccups. So I might have to wait a minute. So while I'm doing that, go grab your drink and we'll get into it. <laughs> hey guys, Chevy Rel here. We're in the stuff room. I am going to talk about some knitting today, but I also have some other weirdo makes like hats, right? So weird. Are you guys all enjoying the weather change? Because I sort of am. It's not too hot yet, so I'm loving it thus far. I have a swing in my backyard. I used to have a hammock swing, and then Dan found this, it's like a big ring, like this big, and it has like nylon rope and webbing and stuff, and I've been loving that chair. So that's basically where I've been hanging out every chance I get when it's nice out. You are probably hearing the lawnmower, Dan is out mowing. Welcome back, if you're a returning viewer. I don't say that very often, but you guys know that I always love it when you come back. If you're new, hey, how are you? I'm Chevis, also known as Chevy Rel. Let's get into some FOs, shall we? The first one is my crop top. It's a crop top. Well, my version of a crop top. This is out of the book in body. I talked about this the last time by Jacqueline C. Slack. I made this dress and I made a size too small. So I went up a size in the shirt and it fits perfecto. I absolutely love it. I have no idea what this fabric is. It's sort of like linen-y, but it's not. I'm gonna go close that door. <laughs> The sliding door was open, so I'm hoping that with it closed, it's going to be better and you're not going to hear Dan mowing our lawn. I made this top because I had the material for it and I wanted to make sure that this size fit because I made the dress a size smaller and it does, so now I'll be able to make the dress. I did pull out my fabric to make the dress and I don't have enough, so I'm going to have to go buy fabric so you'll see that in the future because you know I have this whole like tie-dye thing in my head if you guys watched the last episode, that is to come. So I sewed this. Then Dan and I got invited to a derby themed party. Uh, Kentucky Derby, not roller derby. Even though there were roller derby friends there. <laughs> anyway, it was called the Preakness Stakes. And this just goes to show you how silly I am. I just thought that was like a cool name they came up with for a party, but apparently it's a real race that I found out a day before the party. I just thought it was Kentucky Derby theme party. I made a hat because you have to go big and beautiful, right? I then made a fascinator because I knew that I wasn't going to want to wear the hat all evening because it's a whole lot of hat. First hat I've ever made, I went with a friend and just bought a bunch of stuff at Michael's. Let me show you what it turned into. Hopefully I, oh yeah, it'll work, it'll work. It's, it's a hair up day, y'all, it's warm here. Are you ready for it? This is my hat. It's too big to even all get on screen. It has a bird on it. There's a story here. Hold on, let me, I don't know how well you can, if that even matters. I will put a picture on um, with my dress and stuff, but the reason that there's a bird on it and I'm, I'm gonna use the word fat so nobody be offended. I am a chunky girl, 
So I am not offended by this. When I was little, my dad had gone to auctioneer school and we always used to have him auctioneer for us because I loved it. Dan has just brought to my attention that it's not called auctioneering, it's calling. So my dad went to auctioneer school and I used to love it when he would call. He says that's right. <laughs> and he always sold it to a different person. Like he wasn't really selling anything. He was just auctioneering. And he always sold to a different person. And my favorite person to win was always sold to the fat lady in the back with bird our hat. <laughs> so it needed a bird and it has one. So I started with this loveliness. Now, I'm not gonna wear this hat again. Do you guys have any idea how much these hats cost? They get like hundreds of dollars for these hats. So I might sell it. I mean, it really is awesome, but what the hell am I gonna do with it, right? If you wanna buy it and I can figure out a way to ship it, make me an offer. <laughs> so then I made a fascinator, which is way more manageable. And I guess I could have mentioned that the way I made that hat is hot glue and zip ties. That is how that hat is put together. I am literally sitting on the floor to show you guys this. These were the toothpicks for the hors d'oeuvres. Come on, man. And I just thought it was funny to tuck it in my hat because, you know, booze were involved. So, isn't it cute? And then there's a butterfly on the back too, cause you know. You gotta round that shit out. This one's a little easier to show you close up. Isn't it so fun? Oh my gosh. It was a lot of fun to make. Now, I purchased a headband and then I got one of those green foam flower things at Michael's and check it out, I felted it and hot glued that bitch right on there. Then the tool is just on there with push pins and I shoved all this stuff in it. Score, man. It was a lot of fun. I'll post pictures so you can see all the things. I did share some on Instagram, so some of you have probably already seen this. There were themed games for the race and one of the games I won and that was uh, we had to name a pony. So we all got a piece of paper and we had to come up with a horse name. And then the host, Florentina, who's awesome, uh, picked her favorite and mine won, which know your audience. I called mine Glitz and Glam and that is very Florentina. So I won a bottle of Crystal Head Vodka. And you know I love me some Crystal Head Vodka. That is a company owned by Dan Aykroyd, for those of you who don't know. I've had it on the podcast before. New to me crafts right there. I love me a challenge. Okay, next FO is a big one. I mean, the hat was a pretty big one too in size, but this is a big one in time. Da -da -na -na -na. Look at this awesomeness, you guys. It's my Melted Shrug by Suzanne Somers or So Soon Knits. I love her patterns. I kind of have a crush on her because she's adorable and I love her patterns. I love her designs. I love everything about them. And this turned out amazing. As you know, I ran into some, some bobbles here. I ran out of this... Hold on. I ran out of this minty color mohair, and I'm just gonna go ahead and do this now. That was by Super Fine Yarn Co. Sarah. And I have to tell you, I don't, I haven't done any podcast shout outs in a while. At least I don't feel like. Do you guys watch the Yarn Hellions? It is really one of my favorite podcasts. I just like what they talk about. I like hearing their book recommendations. She's local-ish to me. She doesn't dye anymore, so you can't get this, but this minty mohair color is hers. This is very special to me because she's not dying anymore, so. I have some and a boo-boo. Anyway, I ran out. So then 
I had to use this mohair, well I didn't have to, but I went stash diving and had this mohair in my, this is also a ball, a ball, ball sock from Andy, the Naughty Nitrous. If y'all want some, she makes these on her circular sock machine. And I absolutely love them because, I mean, why not? I like that you have this here. You can roll it down if you want. Give it a little rolled down effect, if you will. I have this much left from it. And what had happened was I saved a little bit of this because I knew that I wasn't gonna have enough. This was supposed to go all the way down. So that's how much I didn't have. So what I did is I just finished this panel, picked it up up here, which is where you're supposed to, you know, pick it up. And then I just added a little bit down yonder. So I think the last time you saw it, I was in here somewhere. Then what you guys didn't see is the sleeves. This is the yarn that I used for my contrast, which are the cuff sleeves, and then the I-cord edge, bind off, whatever, all around. I, of course, had a lot left over of this. It's in my Knitting Notions yarn condom, and it says, fuckity fuck fuck, because, you know, I love me the F word. So I have quite a bit left over of this. Sorry, you know me, shit show. So I already talked about Superfine Yarn Co. Mohair. And then this second color, this second dark color is the other stripe. I had this much left. Squeaked by on that one. And that is Old Soul Fiber Co. in the Western, wet, not Western, Weston colorway. And I don't believe you can get this anymore either. Everything's linked, but for some reason I was thinking you couldn't get this anymore. Then on the brioche section, so it is, this is the right side and this is the wrong side. This teal color that's on the wrong side is Pearl Diver Sanibel, which was gifted to me. And then the, the right side was Atomic Fiber Studio, and I had this much left. So I, I mean, this was a squeaker buyer. Now, let me look at this here. There are some things that I'm gonna say about it. I usually don't go into like all the deets on stuff when I'm knitting it, but I figured this was a really big finish. This is her pattern picture. I figured this was a big enough finish that I needed to uh, tell you some things that I did. First off, I made the large and it calls for a size four needle and I went up to a size five. You saw how it fit on me. I blocked this. Pre-blocked, it was way smaller than I wanted it to be. Way smaller. I wore it pre-blocked, so it wasn't like too small, but I wanted this to be like a Schlanket, you know? Is that what it's called? Shawl blanket, schlanket, or a melted shrug? Anyway, after I blocked it, it grew a shit ton. And I absolutely love the fit now. It's exactly what I wanted. Some things about it, mistake-wise, and I don't normally point out mistakes, but I wanted you guys to see, that, well, sometimes I point out mistakes. I don't want you guys to concentrate on pointing out your mistakes. I'm just showing you mine so that you can see that it's not a big deal to leave them in. The pattern called for Surrey Alpaca, or you could hold mohair double, which is what I did. I held mohair double. Well, when you hold mohair double, there are things, there are two strands, and sometimes you miss those strands. And I'm trying to find an example now which that just goes to show you how hard it is to find, even though when you're not looking for it, I feel like it's glaring. And now that I'm looking for it, I can't find them. What the hell? Ha, found one. There are a bunch and I don't know why. See this right here? I didn't catch that one. And they're all over this. And it doesn't matter because as you can see, I can't find them. There's another one. Right there, see it? Not a big deal, the yarn isn't going anywhere. Don't fret the small stuff. Then, 
when you knit this panel, you pick up, like as you're going down here, I don't think that that's very pretty. I just don't think that that's a very pretty seam. Now, could have been me. Probably totally was me, not the pattern. Like, look at this. It's all boogered up right there. So as I was knitting it, I was like, eh, I don't like the way that looks. You'll never see that when I'm wearing it. Don't sweat the small stuff. The other thing I did, which I don't know how, is if you guys remember, you knit this section and then you put it on hold and you come back here and, and then knit, the well, you knit back here, you knit these three sections and then you pick up right here and finish this section and pick up as you go. Well, for some reason, my panel was longer. I mean, by like this much longer. So it didn't work out even. So down here, I fudged it and just skipped like some of the rows while I was picking up so that I could get that pickup to work out even. You can't even tell. You can't even tell that I did that. Those were just some things that I ran into while I was knitting this. I'll have to look and see when I cast this on. I wonder how long this took me to knit. I'll look back because I'm interested. I feel like this took me forever, and I am so excited to have it off the needles. So excited. Now, I said after I got this off the needles that I was gonna start my P-Rex, but, which I am, but I wanna work on my Yarmulata, which I'll talk about a little bit, before I cast that on. So I'm still, I'm, I'm gonna move right on to another Sosu pattern because I love her patterns. Oh, I didn't say what this is. This is, Black Elephant in the Asymmetry colorway. And this was gifted to me as well. I don't know if it's still available. These are all, except for the mohair, obviously, single ply yarns. That's what the pattern called for. Um, someone was just talking about this. Who was it? Was it Tammy? I think it was Tammy from Cinematic Skeins making a sweater out of single ply. I think that for something like this, it's totally cool. I wouldn't want like a fitted single ply sweater, one that would take like a bunch of tugging on and off or a bunch of wear underneath the arms because it'll pill and get all funky. It'll like felt on itself. But I think for something like this, it'll work great. I mean, obviously the designer calls for it, but I just thought that I would mention that. It's the first garment that I've ever made, all single ply that I recall. If that changes in the future, I will definitely mention it in future episodes. My last F.O., Dan's socks. These are the pole dance socks by Hypercycloid Designs. It is a free pattern. They were a bunch of fun. They really were. Um, it was a little wonky at points because you're like, okay, how can I do this to make this easier? Which I sort of talked about on the last episode a little bit. Um, I really did have a, a good time knitting these. I also mentioned before, it's a free pattern. Uh, I would have gone down on my stitch count. They are a little big, but Dan doesn't mind at all. It is also the first time that I have ever done a hat, hat toe, is that what they call it? Star toe, it's a star toe. And these are Dan's zoot socks for triathlon. This is, am I gonna remember this? This striped color, and, and that is striped. I didn't stripe it. And I have quite a bit left, you guys. Look how much I have left. I could get a pair of socks out of each of those easy. This is the Polaris colorway, and this is the, I did this the last time, annotated. Does that say annotated? That's what we're gonna say, this green color. Now he can wear them this weekend to his triathlon, even though I don't think he's going to need socks. 
but he was very excited to have them completed. And I look damn good in them. <laughs> Guess what time it is now? Whips! I debated on showing this to you. I have been spinning. That bobbin is fatter than the last time you saw it. I only have this much to do, so the next time I sit down to spin, this will be done. Then I picked up my Yarmulata, which I haven't touched in a very long time because I was trying to get that melted shrug done. This is the Yarmulata. It is by Chrissy Abbott and it's a $10 pattern. And this is the pattern I chose for my Lamb Strings Halloween Advent last year. Take a look at this. Actually, let me move my stitch marker quick because I did look at my last episode to see where I was. It hasn't grown very much since the last time you saw it, but it's been such a long time since you've seen it that I thought I would show you again. I've only gotten this much done, but isn't it awesome? Oh my God, I love it so much. This is the back of it. And then there will be two panels for the front that match this. I am just fading these. There's a mathematical equation and it basically, I'm knitting with a different color every two rows and that's how I'm doing the fade. I really like it. It's great mindless knitting when I'm watching a movie that I really wanna like watch the screen, like if it's an action or something because I don't have to look down when I'm knitting. And this is in my Sexton's bag from Vicky. I love it. It has beers on the outside and cocktails on the inside. And I have six more colors to do on that. So it's going to be big. It's going to be more like a kimono style wrap. And I think it's just going to showcase the yarn. Amazing. I'm really excited. Now, Talking about Advents, I'm going to bring this up and put it out into the universe. As of right now, my plan, unless something totally like hits me that I have to have, there have been a few that I've drugged my feet on purchasing Advent wise, and I missed them. Like Skein Cocaine is doing a David Bowie one and I missed it. But you know me, I feel like the universe lets you know, right? This year, instead of opening an advent or purchasing another advent to open, I would like to concentrate on the advent that I got from uh, Teresa, Pretty Twisted, last year. If you guys watch a Lefty Knitter podcast, Aquila, I talk about her all the time. She's my friend. You should go watch her. She just finished a blanket with this, and that makes me want, that made me want to knit a blanket as well. So that is going to be my plan for Advent season. Uh, we'll see how it goes. I also want to work more on my labyrinth throw because I've not touched any of those squares in a very long time. That's my plan. I'm not going to buy an advent this year. I have plenty of yarn to work with. I'm going to a bunch of fiber festivals this year. That's my plan. Okay, next is a new cast on. This is in my round rabbit bag. You guys, I love this bag so much. I've shown it before, but I have to show it again. You can undo it and it turns into a little bucket. Isn't it cool? And look at that, look at that. More pretty twisted yarn. This is that skein that Teresa gave me uh, at Rhinebeck. And it is like tie dyed, awesomeness. I'm so excited to be knitting with it. And I am making the Ripple Bralette by Jessie Made Designs. You've all seen it. I know. Looks like this. It's been in my queue for a while. I made her framework. Uh, let me, I'll go get it. Okay. I don't remember when I made this, but this is her framework bralette, I think. It's been a couple years ago. I really do love, maybe it's a tank crop. I don't know. I really do love it, but I did not have enough yarn to do the straps. So I used some yarn in my stash, like just 
leftovers. And look, it clearly was not super wash and this got dried. So now this sits like up here on me. So I can't wear it because the straps are too short because they've shrunk and this is great. I just need to cut the straps off, which I'm glad that I went and got it because now I'll do this and redo the straps. But I wanted another one. I've been wanting another one. These are so comfortable and I'm lucky enough that I can get away with just wearing this, but this is DK weight and the ripple is fingering weight. So I don't know if it'll be supported enough, we'll see. So I have this much done thus far. This sounds really weird, but this is like not doing the color justice. The color in real life, I'll see if I can take a picture and insert it because this almost looks muted or dusty or pastel-y and it's not at all. IRL, this is like, ah, it's awesome. I mean, this is awesome too, but I mean, in real life, the saturation, I'm dropping shit. The saturation of this yarn is amazing. And I will wear it under like tank tops like this or like bigger tank tops so you can see it. I'm really excited about it. She does say in the pattern that it looks really small, but it like stretches out. So we'll see. I'm on the smaller needles right now. I'm supposed to do an inch and a half for my size, which right now I am just over an inch. So just a couple more rows on this. And then I will go up to... Um, the larger needles. I was gonna say on my socks, on those socks that I knit for Dan. Sorry, I'm all over the place. Good grief. You'd think I was on speed. I'm not, promise. <laughs> it's just been a minute since I've talked to you, so I'm really excited. I think my gauge has changed. And I used to be a, a really tight knitter, so I am almost always had to go up a needle size. And then here lately, I've been getting gauge with the needle size called for in the pattern, but I still go up a needle size sometimes for good measure because I'm scared. And that's what I did with the melted shrug and I'm super glad that I did. But my socks here lately, and I didn't notice until I started getting tubes cranked and their fabric was so much denser than mine was and you know I haven't I mean I get I want to say it's like 10 stitches to an inch how many do you guys get I don't know I just feel like I want my sock fabric to be a little more tight knit so I am going to try to start going down because I usually knit on twos so I'm going to try ones because of that this pattern calls for a two and a four. I'm doing a one and a three. The other reason that I'm doing that is Jessie made designs. If you've not knit any of her patterns, I, I, they're kind of salty, I feel like. That sounds shitty, but I'm just being honest. You, you guys know me. I can't help it. This is a $9 pattern. And when I see it, I think really, I mean... There are intricate lace patterns. I mean, I think that even stars like a $10 pattern or something. Like I just felt like that was a lot for what this is, but I wanted it and there wasn't anything else like it. So I bit the bullet and bought it. Well, dude, you guys, I mean, she puts the work in. She puts the work in. The sizing's amazing. The, the directions are spot on. I mean, it is super size inclusive. She tells you like bust size, like if you have a smaller bust or a larger bust, where to add and where to decrease. I mean, just, it's worth it. It's worth the money. So I felt like I needed to throw that out there because when I saw this was $9, I was like, damn. 
but then I get the pattern and I see the way it's written and I've seen the work that goes into it and all of her notes and I high five to her. It's worth it. I just saw this. She calls for an old Norwegian cast on. And I'm like, oh, I don't, I don't know that cast on. So I look it up and I watch a video and I was like, that looks just like a German twisted cast on. And then I'm like, am I doing a German twisted cast on wrong? So I go and I watch a German twisted cast on video. And I'm like, that's the same thing that the old Norwegian video is doing. So then I Google it. They're the same thing. Did you guys know that? Because I didn't know that. <laughs> I learned that because of this pattern. I'm real chatty today. Sorry, guys. What started me on that is I went down needle sizes because I am in between measurement wise, a medium and a large. A medium is 36 to 38 and a large is um, 40 to 42 and I'm like a 39 bust measurement. And I wanted it to fit snug because I do want it I, I'm hoping that I can wear it like in place of a real bra. Like I'd like for it to like give me a little support. So that's why I went down the needle size. So we'll see how it works out. I don't know. But I'm really excited to see how this color turns out. And that's all I got to say about that. Oh, and the other thing, she has like a printable version uh digital version, you know, like what's better to look at on mobile, what's better to print. I mean, she has all sorts of different PDFs depending on how you like your patterns. And as you guys know, I do like a paper pattern and it looks like it's seen better days by the time I'm done knitting it because I'm like one of these people, but I do like a paper pattern. And now that's all I got to say about that. Oh, and I did not say this colorway name because I've forgotten. I'm going to have to look it up. This was the same color. Actually, let me just look it up now because that'll be less editing for me to do. Actually, no, that's a terrible picture. I'll put it right here. I would tie dye for you. U E W E. That's that's what this colorway is. Okay, I have one more whip. One. And it's for my cow. I'm doing a knit along, which is so weird. I mentioned it on the last episode. If you're new here or you missed the last episode, we are having a deep stash knit along. And what that is, is I want you to pull the oldest thing out of your stash that you purposely bought for a pattern that you've just never knit. And I grabbed these yarns. They are also in yarn condoms. This is Knitting Notions, Holy Shitballs, and my Labyrinth, which is uh, Leela Styles. Look. Anyway, these are the yarns that I purchased forever ago. They are Honey Girl Farm. Uh, this one is a ball with the Goblin King from Labyrinth, duh. And Gold Dust, whoops. Gold dust, what is this? 8515 Superwash Merino Nylon. And I bought these skeins to make the Across the Pond shawl. And I just kept passing it up and passing it up and passing it up. And I don't know why, I don't know why. So I got a bee in my bonnet and I was like, I'm finally gonna make that. And I thought that I cannot be the only one that has bought amazing skeins to knit some pattern that then consistently gets passed up when you go to pick something to knit. So this was the oldest thing and I started it. You guys are welcome to join. Whips are fine. I have no idea when the cutoff is. I'm just gonna let you know because it's gonna take me a while to knit. The hashtag is DSCal23, which stands for Deep Stash Cal. And this is an Instagram entry. Hashtag your uh, objects with that. And I will draw, whoops, I will draw a few prizes for 
this cow. There aren't very many entries, so get your asses out there and start hashtagging. This is what I have so far. Gosh, it's really blowing out today. It's because it's so bright. Can you tell? I feel like I need sunglasses. How can I make this not? You're just not going to get the right color from it. Sorry. So, sorry. Sorry about it. You'll see it another time. Better colors. But that's how this is knitting up. And it's that fun, you know how you like slip and pull and it's, I really like this technique. Does this have a name? I don't know if that has a name or not. You'd think it would. I am loving this yarn. It is squishy and soft and I am going to love wearing it. This is just like a fun, put a couple rows on. I can talk to people while I'm doing this. That's all my whips. I'm loving my crafting world right now. I don't have any enabling, but I do have a happy mail. My friend Brenda went to Pigeon Skates, and that is a roller skate shop. And she got me a t-shirt. It's in California. Tie-dye. It's like she knows me or something. I will be rocking this. And, 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 hold on. It totally matches my skates. And I keep forgetting where they are. Oh, Long Beach. Long Beach, California. I got some stickers and stuff too. Very cool skate shop. And the last thing I'm gonna talk about is Hoosier Hills Fiber Festival, yo. So this weekend, I my goal is to have this up before it happens. Hoosier Hills Fiber Festival is in Franklin, Indiana. It will be my first time going. Dan and I are camping on premises. I'm so excited. So it's like June 2nd and 3rd. I think it's whatever that Friday, Saturday is. Um, we're going down early. There's camping right there at the fairgrounds. I know I've said this before, but just in case you missed it. It'll be cool because I feel like at most of the fiber festivals that I go to, it's just a day trip and you're sort of rushed. You know, like run, run here, run, run there. Like Rhinebeck, there weren't enough hours in the day, right? Or it, it was just... And, and everything is so fast paced at the end. I'm like, what just happened? So this I feel like is going to be a more chill experience. Um, and I'm excited about that. We'll be able to go back to the camper, have a drink, maybe grab some munchies, chill out a little bit. Shit, I could go back to the camper, take a nap, and then go back to the festival. Franklin, Indiana. I've never been there. I think I saw someplace that it's like 20 minutes from Indianapolis. Is that right? I might be making that up. But I started doing some research on it, right? Because now it's closer to the time. I mean, it's next weekend. This weekend's Memorial Day. What's today? Not that you guys care, but this is hump day. It's Wednesday before Memorial Day weekend. So I'll have this up to you guys next week is the goal. And then that weekend is Hoosier Hills. Their social media presence is awesome. Heather is who I've talked to. I don't know what her title is, but she's been posting um, little videos letting you know what's going on. They have maps that are awesome. Their vendor list is awesome. There's some new to me vendors I'm super excited to check out. They have tons of classes if you're into the classes. The fairgrounds are in town Franklin and Heather said that they have a super cute little downtown. And Dan said, have you looked at what's around for us to go to since we're gonna be there the whole weekend? So I started doing research on it and oh my gosh, it looks so cute, you guys. It looks so cute. Of course, I had to look up the breweries. Shale Creek Brewing is a 13 minute walk from the fairgrounds. Old Town Beer Hall, which looks cool, is a 16 minute walk. They have a farmer's market on Saturday morning that looks spectacular. Definitely going to that. They have coffee shops, cool places to eat. There's an antique place I saw, little shops, boutiques. I am excited, I'm excited. So if you're going to Hoosier Hills, uh, let's have a drink. We can either have a drink 
at the camper. We can have a drink in public. You know, you just let me know. Say hi if you see me. If you're not going to Hoosier Hills Fiber Festival in Franklin, Indiana, tell me where you are going. I talked to Johnny Bo and Aquila when they were on their way to Maryland Sheep and Wool because, you know, last year I went there with them and I was feeling a little nostalgic and the weather was great. Remember last year it downpour rained. You just never know, right? Mother Nature, she's like, mm, I'm going to spin the dial today. So anywho, tell me what fiber festivals you're going to. And I'd be interested in what, what do you like about a fiber festival? What makes a cool fiber festival for you? I'm interested. Is it the classes? Is it the amount of vendors? Is it the venue? Is it the sheep? There's llama at this one. I guess that's it. Oh, I printed this out and forgot to show you. Franklin is so cute that they even have a little printable downtown map that like tells you where all the things are. And it's walking distance to the fairgrounds. I'm gonna have so much fun. Ditto's gonna be there, if any of you guys would like to meet Ditto who are going. And yeah, I guess that's it. So now I am going to get another beer, not clean up my mess. I'll save it for later. <laughs> and go swing in my swing for a little bit. That's what I'm gonna do while Dan finishes like doing yard stuff. If y'all are still here, Thanks. Hope you got some knitting done today and grabbed your drink. If you haven't yet and you like this hot mess, like, comment, share, subscribe, all that happy horse shit. Until we meet again, toodles.